Okay guys, so we're ready to start priming, but I'm gonna go over everything that was done to these counters up to this point. Obviously, um, you saw us build them. We built them out of pine plywood, some, some high-end plywood, two three-quarter inch sheets, glued, screwed together. And then we did uh, the, the self-edge MDF trim. It's already been primed and it's nice because they're already rounded edges, so we didn't have to router those. That's why we like to use those. Plus it puts our seam on the top versus the seam on the face where the two sheets went together easier to fill, easier to sand, um, and then bondo. So we bonded all the seams, all the nail holes from screw, uh, nailing the trim face on, all the screw holes on the top, any seams were filled, sanded. And then we also caulked this back edge gap. So the whole back edge of the counters, you know, there's usually a, a gap there. We did a paintable latex caulking on that. Um, as long as it's paintable, our primers will bond to that. And then obviously we cut the sink out. They wanted to do a bigger sink than the actual cabinet. So we cut out the actual cabinet, braced it up. And so now they have a really big sink in this kitchen, which is really nice because it is a kind of a smaller kitchen. So they have a massive sink in there. So we got thick plastic on the floor, painter's plastic on the cabinets. And this thing's pretty much ready to go. So we're gonna go, we're gonna mix up the primer, put the primer on and then start coating this, this kitchen. I mean, it's already drying out and it's only been down for maybe 10, 15 minutes. So um, we'll finish this up and then we'll go into taping our edges to create the dam for uh, the epoxy pour. We got our Ligari squeegees. We're gonna use these to blend um, the epoxy around to create a cool effect, but I wanna cut it down. So we made these really long so we can use them for a lot of different applications for like countertops, obviously floors, but I'm gonna cut it at an angle so the squeegee can still be used on a pole for like a short squeegee. And then I'll trim it back up once I cut it off and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. Not too shabby for not measuring, huh? So now this can be a short guy. Still go on a pole to get into tight areas. You can use them like this, obviously, but I'm gonna just cut this at an angle. All right, now we got a little squeegee for counters. All right, so what we need to do now that the primer's dry, it's tacky. We're gonna do two layers of tape, and we're basically gonna tape half onto the face and half is gonna be sticking up. So we, we do two strips. So he did the first one, I came through with the second one and I'm trying to get to the same height as the first one. If it's off a little, that doesn't matter. What we have is a gallon and a half. I think this is clear. So yeah, this is our clear metallic epoxy, gallon and a half. And then we have a gallon and a half of our pigmented white. And we're gonna be using our universal pigments for the clear. We have our dolphin gray and our ash gray, and then obviously our pigmented white. And again, you can get all this stuff from the store under single items at Ligari.com. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to keep your paddle wheels clean. Denatured alcohol in a bucket with a lid so it doesn't evaporate. We're just gonna spin this forward in reverse a couple times. And we've done this quite a few times. That's why it's all nasty in there. We can reuse it multiple times. All I have to do is wipe it off and we have a perfectly clean paddle wheel. So what I'm gonna do is pour a bead gray. We're gonna split it off and then we're gonna add white right in the middle. All right, so it's good when you guys are dumping out to make sure you're getting color everywhere. We don't wanna to pour too much of one color out and then when we get to a different spot in the counter, we don't have any more of that color. You can kind of see we've kind of even all the color out. Um, so now 
these bigger spots that are opened up. See how the, all this product's touching and leveled out? I don't want to push it away when I'm blending it. I want to kind of bring some of this product to fill in these spots. So once you're done with that, everything's kind of filled in. We're gonna spritz isopropyl alcohol, small to medium drops, and that's gonna create a bunch of cells. Okay, so we spray the isopropyl. Last thing, we're gonna let this evaporate for about 10 minutes, and then we're gonna mist the surface with denatured alcohol. That's gonna make the surface layout glass smooth, and then we'll probably wait half an hour to an hour to pull the tape and let the edges get coated. We're gonna pull the tape right now, and you'll notice it's not pulling any of the primer off of our edge. The biggest trick to not having any primer pull is making sure after you prep your faces, you clean them extremely well, and you won't have any primer pull off your face. So what we do now is I'm just going to come through and slick this whole face off. Don't worry about messing up the design. It's still going to flow over. We just have to get rid of all the surface tension, these dry spots. We want to get them coated with epoxy. We came back. It's been about a half hour, 40 minutes. And like we have a spot here that we want to add some product to. I can see the primer. Sometimes we'll get spots in your edges that kind of didn't flow over evenly. We can brush those in, address them. So I always like to come back, check before we actually leave the project. So, and it's just as simple as getting some that's dripped off. We're just gonna run it on there. And then once you're happy with your, your edges, your faces, we're just gonna scrape the drips. So I like to use a putty knife, something that's flat, skinny, right? So we're almost cutting it off. You can do paint sticks when it's kind of really fluid, but when it starts to get sticky, I always like to scrape it with a putty knife. It'll keep it from building back up on your countertop and it'll kind of just shave it right off. So as long as we do that, we don't have to, we won't have to sand any of the drips, the edges. That's pretty much it for the, the applying the epoxy. Tomorrow we'll show up. We're gonna be doing a matte um, top coat on this. Um, it's gonna look really, really good.